So this is my Bolt 2023 uh, Bolt EUV. And uh, so if the car door is locked, if I hit this button here once that, and then pull the handle, my doors unlock when I hit that button once. If I want to unlock all the doors, I'll hit it twice. Pop open the door here. Okay, so uh, here's my steering wheel. To the left of the steering wheel, you've got this button that pushes out, that you push it and it pops out, you push it and it goes in. So while it's out, I can, I can turn it and I can control the brightness of some of my lit buttons and things. Uh, I think that might control the dash brightness too, I don't remember. Um, so I'll push that back in, I'll play with it later and get it, I'll probably turn it max right now and get it later. Um, auto headlights I find works out really well. So there's my on, if I want to just go on. I think this is is parking lights, and that's headlights on. Uh, so I'm wrong about something, because you can't have duplicate. I just leave it in auto. I find that to be uh, uh, really helpful. Uh, on the door, uh, I have uh, un uh, windows. Uh, you If you want to go all the way down, just press hard, and the, that right... Uh, uh, passenger window will go all the way down. If I want to go down just a little, just push it a little. You'll feel like a, a couple, at least two distinct clicks. Yeah, just two. One will be momentary, and I want to go down a couple inches. If I want to go down all the way, just go to the second click. Ditto and ditto. Here's for my mirrors. Uh, that'll be for the left rear view on the door and right rear view. Uh, let's see, on the, on the steering wheel. I've got adaptive cruise, and there's my adaptive cruise off. Uh, this car has super cruise, so I'll go um, I'll go cruise, and then um, and then set. Oh, this is how you set at your speed and and decrease and increase your speed. You you go down to set, and then if you want to bump it down a few miles an hour, you just hit it. If you want to bump it up, I think these are one mile an hour increments. You bump it up this way. So once you got your speed set, if you're on a divided highway that's mapped, you'd hit this button. This, if you're centered in your lane and everything, will turn green and the car takes over for you. You take your hands off the wheel, keep them ready to grab the wheel if you need to. I've used it now, not a whole lot, but I've probably been driving it like 10 minutes at a time here and there. Uh, on freeways when I've been on the freeways it works great and I'm pretty trusting of it I'm keeping my eye on the road and everything but it works really good um, in stop and go traffic it'll go clear down to zero miles an hour when the car stopped in front of you and then it takes off when the car does and I find it eliminates a lot of the stress of that situation when you're just uh, passively watching it all happen uh, okay so I've got my key fob and let me turn the car on. Oh, let me hold on. Let me put my seatbelt on so I don't have to listen to the chime. Oh, it stops anyway. But I, but I got my seatbelt on now. Um, default, I had, I had this, uh, the dash set up this way. Um, you can scroll through different things. This wheel here, on the on the steering wheel, where my thumb is. You can scroll through different screens and there's all kinds of different things you can play. Oh, turn down the stereo. Um, but I find that to be, oh, I got the climate on and, and I got to set cold. Let me turn that guy off. Let's see, climate and I'm going to go. Okay, so what I did, I, I hit auto. Let me do it again. I'll hit auto. I'll go to the climate and then I got it set to 70 degrees cold. Now I just turn the climate off. And then I can go hit home. Or you can hit the home button. And then I can go audio. And right now I'm getting serious, which is a big surprise because I got a, like a three-story townhouse here and I'm in the garage. And I don't know how the heck that works where I'm still getting serious satellite. I'm getting the 30-day free trial. Um, okay, so back to the dash, the dashboard. Let's see if we can get it to focus on the right thing. Back to the dashboard. You see that that A with the with the beams? That's auto. That's the automatic high beams. And where that control is is on the stock. So this will let's see. Let's see if I can get it to focus on that. 
the steering wheel's in the way. Anyway, it's it's right here. And I, I just pushed it in, so I turned it off, and then I turned it on. Um, this is my 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 range that it thinks it's going to get. I didn't charge it the last time I drove it. Uh, I've just mostly been driving short distances since I bought the car. I want to try it out for longer distances. I haven't tried a, um, a charging station other than my house. That's my maximum range. That's my minimum range. That's probably what I'm going to get. It seems to be pretty accurate so far from what I'm seeing. Like, like I drove uh, 22 miles last night. It's 11 miles to the freeway, excuse me, to the movie that I went to, the theater that I went to. And it took about 22 miles off, off my mid-range there, the, the range that it thinks I'm going to get. Again, that's the max, uh, the, the 220, if I'm driving like really carefully. And if I'm driving like a like kind of fat, real fast, I would get 151. Um, I'm in the one pedal driving mode. I drove home from the dealership that way. I didn't know it. I basically was shown nothing when I was at the dealer on how to operate this car, almost nothing. Basically just how to get it out of park. That was about it. Um, he said you can try one pedal driving mode later and get used to it and learn it and all that. He didn't know it was on when I left the dealership. It took me a minute to learn. Uh, the only thing that you have to get used to is how, how quickly or how slowly it's going to come to a stop and come to a light. So basically, you think of the gas pedal as a speed selector. You push down to go faster. You lift up to go slower. And then you'll see, when you lift up to go slower, you'll see this regen light up with the arrows. And this KW consumed becomes KW generated back your battery it is awesome uh, i rarely touch the the brake pedal one way i i touch it even less now it took me a day or two to f to find and figure this out from videos this is the uh extra regen paddle right here on the left side of the steering wheel so let's say the, the light turned uh red um or is turning red turning turned yellow and you're not going to make it through the intersection and you lift off the, the, the gas pedal and you're not going to regen in time for the intersection. So you're going to step on the brake and waste power. You can probably just hit this and hold it and that will give you like double the regen. That's just by feel. It seems like it's about double the regen and you'll, you'll stop and you won't have to waste any power and you won't have to touch the brakes. Okay. Covered uh, uh, cruise, uh, covered, let's see. Um, this is if I want to do something with the car, like um, navigate home, I just hit this. It'll ask me what, what I want, and then I'll tell it what I want. Uh, let's see, climate controls. Um, I find auto to be awesome. It senses moisture in the window, so it'll even it'll even run if it needs to. It'll run the uh, the defrost, run the air conditioner, basically to dry out the air. Um, so I hit auto. Now this is my uh, Sirius radio screen right now. I hit auto, and then I just touch that climate, and I get the full screen. And then it turned on automatically, but I can turn it off. Uh, I can custom tune stuff, but. I find just auto and set the temperature and I'm good. Um, and then I'm going to turn it off because I, it's cold right now. I don't want it to set it at 70 degrees. Uh, and then you can control things individually here, which right now I'm finding totally unnecessary. Although the cool, cooling and, heat, and, and heating the seats, I will do even on auto if I, if I want some custom tuning there. So there's maximum heater and I can turn that down. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm on the wrong screen. Well, let me go. So the two different ways I'm going to go back to home screen is here or hit the home button. Um, and then I'll go back to audio. Okay, what am I doing wrong with the seat? Oh, I know what I'm doing. Uh, let's see. Let me do auto again. Okay. I turn the climate off, and I should, you know, oh, there it goes, okay, so this is max heat, and then I'll go down a notch, down a notch, down a notch, and then I'll go cooling, and max cooling, 
and same thing down a notch down a notch down a notch and off okay so that's about all i've messed around with um with the climate i find auto is good enough and i'm not screwing with any of these other any of these other buttons um this is uh, sport mode so i just hit that and you'll see i forget where it is on the dash well let's see sport mode on okay and let's see i think i got a oh there there it is i got a flag down there uh, race flag, race winner, winner's flag. This is uh, my lane guidance, and then I'll turn that off, turn that on. What that does, let's see if something on my dash changes. Yes, it does. I've got that, the, the car in the lanes, that's on, that's off. I find leaving it on all the time. The only thing is, with it on, when you are uh, changing lanes, and if you don't signal, the steering wheel is going to try to nudge you back in the same lane. You can totally override it and just change lanes anyway. But I, I will use my turn signal all the time now just to avoid that. Plus, when you use a turn signal, the car is going to warn you if someone's there. And I like that feature a lot. So it's it's just a good habit to use a turn signal. This will, like a lot of cars, you just do momentary. You don't push it all the way. You just you just click it and it'll give you it'll give like the three signals, three flashes. I like that. Okay, so let's go home. Well, I can, so again, I can go button or I can go here. Last time I did this, it, right now in the video, yeah, I went to map. That's kind of odd. Oh, okay. It is going to radio, but showing where I am. That's weird. I hadn't noticed that before. Go to audio, and I'm listening to Sirius right now. I've got my 30-day. They'll do 90 days if I go to uh, a credit card, <laughs> which I'm not sure if I'm going to do. I don't think I'm going to keep this Sirius. Um, this is the, the research. I like Sirius a lot, but I don't think I want to pay $15 for it. I have a lot of good radio stations in the area, including commercial free uh, public, uh, like KUSC classical music. Uh, so this is research. So if I'm in a, like a really dusty area or something, I would, I would recirculate the air. Uh, and that's about it for, let me see if I can think of anything else for the simple, quick, like give you a leg up that I didn't have. Oh, how about how to how to pull out and, and drive and all that? Okay, so I'm gonna step on a brake. So I'm gonna push that push this button down. That's gonna release my parking brake. So think of the the old stick. You pull up to to uh, set your parking brake. You push down to release it. So I'm gonna push down, and the dash will will let me know. I felt the pedal. Park parking brake released. Now I go reverse. I have the garage door closed, so I'm not going to back out. Uh, I go reverse, and I got my 360-degree camera. You can see my messy garage with a the bike there on the left and trash cans and all that. But there's my 360-degree. Amazing. It looks like a drone launch, especially... Now, if I was in a parking lot, it would be much simpler. But you'll see the, the parking lines. You'll see how your car's lined up and how good a job you did with parking. It's really cool. Okay, so let me... Oh, and then... Uh, forward of course would be d for drive i'm just lifting these is all i'm doing so i'm going to do the reverse i'm going to go to park i'm going to park the car basically i didn't move it but i'm going to pretend like i'm parking it and i'm going to engage the brake sorry i got a lift so i'm going to lift and it, and now it says parking brake set so now i'm, I'm set to turn the car off uh, i think that's about it for everything i can think of hazard uh, i just saw something Let's see, that I thought I might want to talk about what was it on the dash. Oh, you know what? I could cover briefly. There's some good videos on energy management, but I can give you a couple tips here. And this this was enough for me once, once I did this. Uh, let's see, energy, energy. That was probably on my first screen, energy. So I go here. So you got energy and you got charging in charging so this is i've got it set to to just stop at least the car knows when it's home with the gps at home i've got it set to charge at 80 ish percent 78 percent so once the battery's at 78 uh it'll stop charging from what i've read a, a good place to stay is between 20 and 80. if you go to 100 you'd want to do the like right before you take off somewhere far um you don't want to, the battery to sit at 100 all the time. It'll just shorten the life of the battery, uh, how many battery cycles you get. I don't know how much it'll be. Some people say don't sweat it, but most people charge to 
I'm going to charge at 80%. If I'm going really far, I do intend to just bump it all the way up to 100 and then but take off pretty pretty soon afterwards and burn burn through some of it. Okay, uh what I wanted to talk about was TOU schedules details impacts. Well, there's other videos and I'll let you watch those on setting this up because I don't see it right now, but I I've got it all set up. So my peak time when I don't want to charge is from uh, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. So what I do, this has one funny thing and it's it's important to know, otherwise you're going to be screwing with it for a while trying to figure it out. Midnight is, is like a dividing line. You can't go, like let's say you wanted to pro program it to, to not charge from 11 p.m. to 1, 1 a.m. You can't do that. What you have to do is tell it not to charge from 11 p.m. to midnight and then midnight to one. So midnight's like a new day for it. So mine is uh, four to nine, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. That's my peak time and everything else is, is, is the higher rate. So what I do is I program it from midnight to, uh, to charge or not charge, not charge. I program to not charge from, let me think, no, I think you program it. I wish I could find it right now. If I can, eh, I can't find it right now. Uh, I can't find it. Okay, what you? I from. I'm doing this from memory, but I'm pretty darn sure it's you. You tell it when you uh, when you want it to charge, not when you don't want it to charge. So, so I would have to tell it I want it to charge from 9 p.m. to midnight, and then midnight to 4 p.m. Uh, so again, midnight's a dividing line. You'll figure it out. Watch somebody else's video and you'll figure it out. So it's a pretty simple concept. Just remember that midnight's a new day. So you got to program it to midnight and then after midnight. It's that simple. Uh, and that's about it. I think that's all I can think of for now. I hope I hope at least one person found this useful. <laughs>